this is a J-Cut tool. The J-Cut tool is an old tool used to both burnish pivots, which is kind of shine them up and clean them up, uh, both the sides uh, and the end points of the uh, pivot. And it's also used to reduce the size of the pivot. So what we have here, I'll use my tweezers to point, is I've got the, the gear installed kind of inside of this, of this tool. Now the tricky part, the tool's got these two little arms here I'm pointing at. And I'm going to zoom in here to, so you can get an idea of what it looks like. Let's see if I can uh, zoom in. So there we go. So you'll see that the, there's these two little notches on the bottom. I'll just rotate this a little bit. And they're like a little snake tooth. And these teeth are um, grabbing uh, the spoke. So the spoke for the gear is in between the two teeth there, as you can see, right? And there's a the teeth there, and there's a the spoke in the middle. And all you do is you place the gear in the little tiny hole that receives a pivot, the female hole on this little round spindle here. And then the pivot side rests on this notch here. And these notches are numbered. This one says 10. Then there's 10, 11, 12, 13, etc., etc. And in this tool, what you do is you pull this out. Just back this up a bit. You pull this part out, and it's connected. It sort of stays in place by this uh, this arm here. And you pull the tool out um, by loosening the top first, and then pulling like this. And then the tool, as you can see, hopefully, has notches on it. There they are. And there's corresponding numbers for these notches uh, on the side. So. The uh, first thing you got to do is determine what notch you need. So the smaller the pivot end, the smaller the notch. And this tool actually came with a uh, device for measuring the notches. Let me see if I can find this really quickly. Um, I'll forget that. Anyway, it's a V-shaped um, gauge. Oh wait, it's down here. Just hang on. Just keep an eye on that tool. So it's a V-shaped gauge. Here's the gauge here. And all you do is you slide the pivot into the hole of this gauge and then you slide it down until it stops and there's a number on the side. You see the numbers there? And the numbers correspond to the pivot size in, in one one hundredth of a millimeter. So this thing stopped at, uh, at 15. So what you do there is you take the uh, these rods here and on this end here there's numbers and you find the corresponding number 15 and that number goes up and then you put the this into the JCOT tool with number 15 pointing upward actually this one actually goes only goes up to 14 so I'll just put 14 in there just for purpose of demonstration and you slide that in and then you very carefully have to make sure that pivot uh, sits on the groove or the notch in the tool. So I'm, I'm pushing it all the way in here. I'm going to lift the pivot up just a bit to get it inside that. This thing could fall apart on me any second now. So There we go. And so I have sitting it on the notch. I'm going to zoom in. I tighten the top here, then I tighten this here, make sure that's tight. And there's also uh, this knob here, and what this does is it moves the spindle back and forth so that it's the right distance. And you just want these claws to grab that. Um, I probably have it grabbed a bit too much, but it's kind of out of the way, so it doesn't matter. If I were to pull back on this a bit, like that, it would move it would move those little snake teeth back um, to a position where they're grabbing the, the uh, gear a bit better probably. So just move that back a little bit and I think they're grabbing the gear quite well there. 
and I'm just going to move this a bit to see if that's working. Yeah, so that'll turn like that. And then someone told me on the internet that all I need to do is get one of these badge things that you can get from um, uh, any dollar store and make sure it's string. And then all I did was I've got a vise down below and I've got these paper, the watch paper jammed in here. And they also said just put the, the JCOT tool into the vise and put the watch paper on the sides. Kind of that's the way when you drop parts down the middle, then the paper catches the part. Then you've got to jam this thing just on the edge like this so the string is free like that. And I have a burnisher or file, right? So these files are kind of it's a square, but it's a what's the name of that? I mean, I am an engineer, so I should know. It's a there. So it's off. It's off just a bit. So there's a round edge here, um, and around I believe a round edge on the other side. So you got to pick it so it's leaning towards the round edge, so that when you actually move this file back and forth as a burnisher on the top. Of that pivot right that it it the pivot is rounded just before it gets to the uh, the actual shaft of the gear right so so it's you got to make sure the rounded part of that pivot file is on is sort of on the same side on, on this side right of the pivot and not on this side so you're using a rounded part because the pivots are actually a bit conic they're sloped upward as they get towards the the shaft, the gear shaft here. So then you put a spot of oil on top of that. And the motion is when the pivot is turning counterclockwise, then you have to move your file against the direction. So it's spinning this way, you move it this way, spinning the other way, you move it this way. So clock counterclockwise this way, clockwise that way. And all I do then is put this string over the top like this. I'm by no means an expert. I actually just received this tool so as I get better with this um, I'll let you know what the, uh, the better instructions might be. So you do that and then you put the string over the wheel like that. You see that? Someone told me to do this which is kind of cool and that's instead of using the bow and I have this set up so I can use my left hand. I'm actually left-handed even though I do most of my watch stuff with my right hand. And then I make sure I look at the uh, the, the uh, rectangular shape here of the of the file to make sure the rounded side goes on the inside and I put that and I, I've taken a spot of oil and I've put it on that I just put watchmakers oil on the top like that and then I put that burnisher on there like this and then I spin the gear so in this case I would spin it this way and move the file this way and then it comes back move that way and then back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I'm trying to move the file. And I do not have the touch yet. I've just started doing this. So it's brand new to me, but I was kind of peeved that nobody had put anything on the internet on this. I looked everywhere and the information is 0.0. .0. And that smoothens out the edges because else this pivot will slip into a jewel hole and if it's not smoothened out, then it will, in fact, there'd be friction. And if there's friction, then there's a problem. So that, I've polished the edge there. So I, th I assume I've polished the edge. Because I'm actually going to take a picture of this with my, tele my USB uh, camera. And now I hear, the rumor has it, and I haven't done this yet, that if you want to polish the endpoint of this thing, then you have to um, turn that around, right? And you have to pick the right size pivot hole. And again, I think this was something like 15, but I'll pick 14 and see if this fits. So put that 14 in there, right? And then that will align with, with this quite nicely, I believe. And then I will stick that in like that. I'm just hoping the whole the pivot fits through. And look at that it does. And I am going to lock this down. 
and I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it. And what I'm supposed to do here from everything I've read is I've got this like that, is I'm supposed to flatten out the bottom of this, right, by putting, um, I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on this just to make sure it's not gonna ruin this pivot on the end. So I got a handy dandy needle applying watchmakers oil blob yabba dabba do device like that. I'm not using expensive oil for the end of this. And I think what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of oil on the file itself. Like that. Just to make sure the file's got some oil on it. And then I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to take this really neat string device, jam it under my vise so it comes up. And I'm going to move it around the top of this. Uh, Jcot tool like that and the hole is sticking out the other side so I'm just going to rotate this and see if it actually rotates so it's actually rotating there which is kind of nice I'm hoping this is all being caught at glori glorious speeds in the video and I'm going to just Just do this a little bit, and that should get the end of the pivot. So the end of the pivot should, in fact, be nicely flattened. And you want to make sure that surface is absolutely flat. There we go. This is working rather well. And there we go, and I release that. Release the Kraken! I release the Kraken. Now I've got to take this out. Um, take this out of the tool by loosening up the top here. Let me just zoom out a bit. And just for the sake of the video, I will pull this back. And I will put the other side in just so you can see what that looked like for two seconds. Because um, I realized that I didn't uh, have it on a close up for that. So. And there it is there and I make sure I push it in so just the pivot is resting in the notch so you can see right there the pivot is resting in the notch and I tighten this up like that and then again when I go over the, um, the sides with this tool I'm actually I like this it's kind of cool I just make sure I put a little bit of oil on top like so. That's a lot of oil, so I don't want to do that. And this is not the, uh, I don't want to cause an oil slick in the local environment. All people will be all over me. So just put a little oil on top like that, and then I put the file on top. And as I pull one way, I move the file the other way. And again, you've got to have, if your notch is too deep, it won't, the file won't touch the pivot. If your notch is too shallow, then the the potential of your file removing material from the pivot which is not good unless you want to reduce the size of the pivot and I don't know if this file itself will just clean the pivot or reduce the size of the pivot I guess if you roll it back and forth enough eventually it'll reduce the size of the pivot which is initially why I got this tool was I was working on a 7750 watch a Valjour watch and I could not find the proper gear for this thing but I did find a gear with the pivots too big and the jewels were too small so I elected to replace the jewel instead of um, dealing with the pivot and I had I wish I had had this tool because I would have just removed the size of the pivot and there it the gear fell down on the ground where you don't want it to be because then you roll over it with your with your chair and you get all pissed off anyway that is my demonstration of the use of the JCOT tool.